Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that are new to the channel, uh, you may not know what this is. This is what I like to call the meat and potatoes of yesterday's live stream. And what I do is, is I extract a few questions that I may have missed during the live streams. I go over them with you and then I give you the meat and potatoes of that live stream. That way for any of you that don't have an hour and a half, two hours to spend during the live stream, you can come back and catch what the meat and potatoes of that live stream was about. So first we're going to go ahead and start off with a few questions that I missed yesterday. And here we go. From Manuel Diaz. Hi Rudy, I purchased an energy solar generator and I also have some Harbor Freight solar panels. Is that good? I don't see why not. I've never reviewed an energy solar generator, but I've looked at them and I've seen other channels that have reviewed them and they seem to be a very good solar generator. Uh, whatever kinds they have, it's a very good company and uh, they're a little bit pricey, but they look like they're very good quality. And as long as your Harbor Freight solar panels work, that's all that matters. I would have some extra on the side just in case because they do lose their efficacy over time. The second one is from Chelsea Hutchinson. Question, what is the best life pole solar generator for a 15.5 cubic foot chest freezer in case of a power outage? Well, I can tell you that I've used my Blue Eddy actually just a few days ago. We had a power outage for about four or five hours here because a power pole, one of those electric poles, fell down somewhere in a street near us. But we lost power for a while. And what did I do? I used my Blue Eddy EB240. I thought they stopped making them, but I guess I was wrong. If you go to the Blue Eddy site, they should still have them there. It's a 2400 watt hour solar generator. I love that Blue Eddy model because it's so simple to use. It's plug and play very good quality the only downfall of it that i see is that it only has a 1000 watt inverter however if you're only going to use it for a freezer which is usually what i use mine for it's plenty a chest freezer i'm assuming probably maxes out at about 450 or 500 watts and then it, it does a continuous wattage usage of probably about 170 to 300 depending on whether the compressor is on or off so a blue eddy eb240 in my opinion is a great solar generator however i have a new favorite solar generator and that is the opus model the o U-P-E-S model, uh, which is made by Opus. And I've reviewed several of those. Actually, I've reviewed the 1200 and the 1800. Those are both very good, in my opinion, high quality solar generators, have a very good battery, and they come at a pretty good price. Ann Palmer asks, I can some beans and the beans are above the water level. Is that okay? That just means that maybe some of the water that you put in there came out of the jar while it was processing. I've canned beans that have come out like that before as well and they're just fine. The beans on the top might be a little bit hard because they're a little drier than the ones that are submerged in the liquid, but it's always been just fine every time that I've used it, Ann. Uh, Belinda Orozco. How is Victor's baby? Victor's baby, Michael, is doing great. He's getting big. He just passed his first month on this earth uh, just a few days ago, about a week ago or so. And he's getting big. He's got his eyes open more. He's awake more. And he's more attentive. And I even think that he knows that I'm his granddad. So he's doing great. Thank you very much for asking. Uh, Sharon asks, how will we use gold and silver coins to trade, buy gas, electricity, etc.? Well, Sharon, all we have to do is take a look at other countries. What do they do? In Venezuela, for example, not too long ago, they were shaving off little pieces of gold in order to get haircuts, in order to get uh, groceries, and just get basic items. Gold and silver is universal money, meaning that it is recognized in every single country in the world. And even if you go to a different country and you have gold and silver, you can always trade that in for for their currency now if you're talking about like an shtf like we're mad max i wouldn't even rely on gold and silver during a mad max kind of a world i would rely on my preps in my opinion gold and silver is mainly used to store your wealth and so that you can have something to start with some wealth to start with over when the crisis ends ali's channel asks do you recommend solar panels for a home I think solar panels are a great thing to have in addition to a wind turbine if you can get one and hook it up. Uh, however, I believe that having a gasoline generator should be first on your list before you get any kind of a solar generating system, right? Or an electric generating system that runs on solar. I think that a gas generator is more important to get first and then complement that gas generator with a, with a solar generator or a system that you yourself put together. And our second to last question comes from Clay 
Pedersen. What is the best way to make swimming pool water into safe drinking water? In my opinion, Berkey water filter. A Berkey water filter or a reverse osmosis water filtration unit. Both of those will take the chlorine out of the water. However, if it was like during a grid down, a long term grid down event and I had pool water, I would always do what I've often told you to do. I would take that water, I would boil it, I would filter it, and then I would add back a little bit of chlorine to it and then let it gas off for a half an hour or so to get that chlorine out of there just to be double, triple safe that that water is going to be good for my family to drink. But that's what I would do. Do your research. I know that you can also use iodine and there's other filtration systems you can use, but that's what I would do if I had to use pool water. I would filter it, then I would boil it, and then I would go ahead and add just a little bit of chlorine, usually eight drops of chlorine or bleach per gallon uh, for clear water is good enough to make sure that any contaminants in there or bacteria will be killed off and it'll be safe for you to drink. And the last question is, and this has to do with what's coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to explain to you what it is that we're going to be doing this year. I am going ahead and bringing for the the uh, December bash giveaway, our Christmas giveaway that we have every December. I'm bringing it forward to August. So we're going to have Christmas in August this year, and I'm going to explain to you why here in a second. But Dacia Detre asks, Rudy, is that for only U.S. or anyone? And uh, what I believe Dacia was referring to is the giveaway that I talked about during our last live stream. And that is for everyone. However, if you do not live in the United States, you have to have a way for me to be able to get you that money, right? Because I'm going to be giving away money. So if you have a PayPal, I can PayPal it to you. I'll go ahead and go over that next month when we start doing those giveaways. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining in. I hope that you enjoy the meat and potatoes of yesterday's live stream. And thank you very much for your support, as always. God bless you all, because I don't think I sign off during the last bit of this video. I want to postpone my, or not postpone, but bring my Christmas Bash giveaway from December and bring it to August next month. So, because, and this is why. I really love doing the Christmas Bash giveaway in December. However, people need to be prepared. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to be prepared. And I understand that there is a lot of people out there, all right, that are within this community that are that, that are not very well off financially. You may be on a limited income. You may be on a low income or, or you may be on Social Security or something like that. I understand that. And I would rather do our Christmas bash giveaway in August than to do it in December. Uh, because what I want to do is, is I just want to give away um, Visa gift cards. I want to give away $100 Visa gift cards. And $100 is, the reason I picked $100 is because with 100 bucks, you can go out there and get yourself a 50 pound bag of rice, a 25 pound bag of beans, uh, 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 at least a good dozen cans of meats, uh, a few dozen cans of, uh, of beans, or, or of vegetables. Anyways, you can take $100 and get enough basic items to feed yourself for a month or even two. I'm talking about basic stuff, but it will keep you alive. Calories are king. So I want to do that this August. And what I'm going to do is this August, uh, I think August has four weeks, but we're going to go ahead and split it up. Every Sunday, this August, every single Sunday, I'll be giving away four or five $100 gift cards every single Sunday during our live stream. And I'm just going to go ahead and let those of you that want to enter, enter by giving you a code word. So I'm doing this mainly because I want people that are in real need to come to our live stream and, and then enter the code word. And then those of you that, that don't need it, that don't need the money, you can enter or not. It's up to you. You can enter or not. But I would rather take that and give it away in the form of cash and, you know, in the form of a gift card that you can go to the store and buy some preps with than wait till December. Because who knows how much a bag of rice will cost in December. I'd rather you get it now. So that's what I want to do. And the only way that I can do that, ladies and gentlemen, is like Yarn Prepper said. If you let an ad or two run through, that's the only thing that I've ever asked of you all is to donate a little bit of your time. If you donate a little bit of your time and let an ad run through every now and then, it really does help and it allows me to do what I'm going to do this August. So what I normally do is, is throughout the year, I say I have a little pot where I put some money. Every time YouTube pays me, I put some money in it. And then uh, by December, 
I, I take whatever's in there and that's what we do for the giveaways. All right. And then we also do our donations that we always do around that time of the year. But now I've just taken whatever we've saved up through this, you know, up to, up to now. And that's what I'm going to be giving away. And then here in December, if everything's good, hopefully we'll have a little mini December bash giveaway and it'll be awesome. But uh, that is a way to support the channel. Another way, if you want to support the channel is just use my links below, but only if you're going to buy stuff from there anyway. If you're going to go to Amazon, use my link if you want. If you're going to buy your freeze-dried food from Nutrient Survival, which you know is the best in the world, in my opinion, go ahead and buy and use my link and use my code for 10% off. And uh, even Blue Eddy. I have an affiliate with Blue Eddy, but I think that's about it. Those are the three places I have an affiliate ship with. But that's what I plan on doing for August. Let me know what you think about that. Put it all in caps if you think that's a good idea that I do that this August. Because I think that people really need a little bit of help this time of year. And although we can't help everyone, we can do our best. I just want you to know that a lot of this, if not most of it, it's not coincidence, ladies and gentlemen. It's not by happenstance. So check it out. Uh, I took a look at this article, and I got a few emails talking about this article here. Uh, the UN deletes weird satirical articles celebrating benefits of world hunger after backlash. So the UN put up this article that this guy wrote, I think back in 2008, saying that world hunger is a good thing because hungry people work harder. And we, him, this is he, him talking, I'm paraphrasing, we, the, the people that have money, we need people to scrub our toilets. We need people to clean our houses to scrub our floors. And then once this was discovered and it went viral, then the person who wrote that said, oh, I was just being satirical. It was just satire. I was joking. But do you really think that they were joking? Do you really think that they were joking when they say that hunger is a good thing pretty much because it allows you to control people? That's pretty much what that's saying. That hunger is a good thing because it pretty much allows you to control people because the hungrier that people are, the harder that they work. So if, if that was just satire, back in 2015 when they had that, uh, uh, I, for, I, I don't know what to call it, for lack of better words, they had that exercise that was called Reset the Table where they got a whole bunch of people from different places, from different industries, even from the military, from governments, you know, saying, how do we reset the world food supply? You know, was that coincidence that that happened? You know, was was Cyber Polygon coincidence that it happened? Uh, of them having an exercise of what would happen if we lost internet? Internet access or if we got hacks to where the internet was not viable for most people? And then after that exercise happened, we, ha we started getting a whole bunch of hacks. And now look at what's going on in Canada. Was that a coincidence? Was event 201 a coincidence that occurred on September, I think it was, no, October, October 18th of 2019, event 201, which was an exercise where, where, where they were playing, I guess you can call it a war game of what would happen if a worldwide health crisis took place just three or four months prior to an actual worldwide health crisis taking place? Was that a coincidence, ladies and gentlemen? Is it a coincidence that Mr. Gates owns most, not most, but owns the most farmland, privately owned farmland in the United States? I think it's above 300,000 acres now. Is that a coincidence? Why does Mr. Gates want to be a farmer? Here in the United States, when a couple of years ago, we were paying less than $2 a gallon for gasoline, now we're paying over $5 a gallon for gasoline, and we still have just as much oil as we did back then. Is it a coincidence that the United States government is deciding to take our, our, our emergency supply of oil, take that out of the tanks, which is supposed to be used for strategic purposes in case some kind of a major crisis occurs to where oil production is cut off, that we can live on for another 35 to 60 days. But they're taking that instead and sending it overseas. Is it a coincidence that we have such high gas prices? Is it a coincidence that the price of natural gas has gone up as much as it has? When we still produce just as much natural gas as we did 
But instead of leaving it here in the United States, the government has seen it, seen it fit to ship it outside of our borders. None of this is a coincidence, ladies and gentlemen. None of it is. All of this has been planned for a long time. So the United States was an experiment. First country in the world that had real freedom where people could do live their life how they wanted to live it. Now they have to destroy it. And how are they destroying it? Man, they're very smart. They are very smart, ladies and gentlemen. The first thing they did was take over the financial system. Back in 1913, Woodrow, Woodrow Wilson, he betrayed his fellow Americans. Right? He forsaken his fellow Americans. And that's not me saying it. That's him saying it on his deathbed. He pretty much said that he forsaken his fellow Americans by giving the power of our money to the Federal Reserve. That's how they've taken over America. That's one of the ways, not the only way. They've taken over America through the financial system. And that financial system was set forth knowing that it will fail because it cannot go on forever. Because the creation of fiat currency cannot be, it, it can be infinite, but not in a finite world. You can print all you want, but like the Ice Age farmer says, you can't print food out of thin air. So they already knew that this system was going to fail when they imposed it. What's another way that they've been destroying America? It's called the Clive and Piven. Clive and Piven was a, a male and a female. I, I forget what their, I think they were professors. But they came up with this Clive and Piven, uh, which says to overwhelm a system. If you want to destroy a system from within, you overwhelm it with social programs. So what's happening at our southern border right now? We have millions of people pouring in the southern border. And the United States government and several state governments are right there saying, hey, we're going to give you this. We're going to give it to you. Just give it to them. Where does that come from? That money that they're giving away in all of these social programs, and not just to people coming in illegally, but to anyone who's on a social program. That money that is being given on social programs is money that is being that is that is deriving its value from your labor. So that's another way to destroy a nation from within is to overwhelm it with policies that provide those who did not earn to get from those that did earn. All right, ladies and gentlemen, why do you think taxes is so important? People are always asking, why do we have to pay taxes when the money can just print whatever they want? Well, the reason that we have to pay taxes, ladies and gentlemen, is because we have to labor in order to pay taxes. And those taxes that we pay, when you look at it, you're not paying dollar bills. You're paying bits and pieces of your life. Every $100 bill, every one of these, ladies and gentlemen, has bits and pieces of your life. So when the government takes it from you, it's not this, that it's not the paper that it's taking. It's taking minutes and seconds and hours of your life and giving it to someone else. It is the best way and the most efficient way to redistribute your wealth, and your wealth is your time. So this has all been planned, ladies and gentlemen, but does it really matter? Does it really matter that this has all been planned? Because is there anything that you can do about it? What can I do about this? Look at this. What can I do about this? Nothing, right? Nothing. There's nothing that I can do about this. This is not a real $100 bill, by the way. <laughs> this is not a real $100 bill, okay? There's nothing that I can do about this system. Nothing at all. Do I have another one right here? There's nothing that I can do about this system on a personal basis. I can't end this system. So what can I do? I can take some of this and turn it into some of this. Every time that you take some of this and you turn it into one of these, you destroy the dollars that you used. That's what you can do on a personal basis, but it's not going to destroy the system. So what can we do? We can prepare. That's what we can do. We can prepare for that when the system is destroyed from within, there will be a whole bunch of patriots. There will be a whole bunch of us out there that were prepared and we can fight back. We can fight back in whatever way, all right? We can fight back in any way. Why? Because we're strong. 
That's that's what we can do. I've often said we cannot change the system. This system is too far gone. And all of this stuff has been planned. How in the world can all of this be just circum, you know, happenstance? How in the world can it all just be happenstance? Oh, it's just a coincidence. How many coincidences does it take for people to finally wake up to the fact that there is an entity within the world that wants to tell sovereign governments and sovereign nations how they are going to conduct business and in fact take away the sovereignty of the citizens by taking away the sovereignty of the nations this esg thing that i've talked about quite a bit right the um uh, you know the esg that the un is coming out or has come out with that most us corporations are now on board right most corporations are now on board with this ESG, which means what? It means that these corporations are taking orders from the UN. They are taking orders from the UN on how to conduct business. And who owns the politicians, ladies and gentlemen? The corporations own the politicians. So the UN is pretty much going to run our government if this ESG thing, and by the way, ESG is environmental, social, and governance. That's what ESG stands for. And for those of you that don't know, it's, it's, like a, it's like a credit system, a credit score system that is put on companies. Their ESG scores will have a lot to do with how they can conduct business in the future. And now the SEC, the Securities Exchange Commission, now they're starting to enforce this. And none of us voted for this. Nobody here, no one voted for this ESG thing but they're doing it. Well, what can we do about that? There's not too much that we can do about that on a personal basis because whenever you get rid of a bad politician, two more follow. And whenever you think that a good politician is getting in office, give him six months, and he went from making $174,000 a year to getting a $3 million book deal, and now he doesn't care what his constituents think anymore. So if you're not preparing by now, if you're not getting ready, do your own research. All of the stuff that I told you, I didn't make up. Go look it up. Go look it up for yourselves and convince yourselves. And at the very least, if you think that this guy right here is nuts from what I'm saying, if you think that I'm just nutty because I'm saying what I'm saying, then prepare just in case, just in case there's a hurricane or a tornado. But I believe that we need to be prepared much more than just a hurricane and a tornado right, or any kind of uh, natural disaster that may happen. I believe that we need to be prepared for the long term. I, when, when I first started this, I, I, I would tell you, yeah, just be prepared for a couple of weeks, three months. And then, I, and then I switched to, yeah, you should be prepared for three months to six months. And then I said, and then I switched it again about a year later. Yeah, you should be prepared for a minimum of a year. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I have to say. Get as prepped as you can for as long as you can. If you have the room, if you have the funds, get as prepped as you can for as long as you can. Do your own research because you have to convince yourself. Don't let me convince you, right? Because if you let me convince you, you're, you're doing it wrong. You have Allow me to motivate you to go and do your own research. And then once you do your own research and you convince yourself that, hey, there is some validity to this, let me go ahead and get prepared. Do you remember when, when inflation started picking up a little bit last year, when it, when it started to become recognizable in the government's numbers, right? We already knew it was happening. But when it started to be recognizable in the government's numbers, because you see inflation uh, works as a trickle down. You know, in the last couple of years, they printed so much money that eventually it had to make its way into the economy. And the, the bad news is that most of that money they printed hasn't made its way into the economy. Only a little bit has. I would say that only about maybe one-fifth of it has, which means that inflation is going to get even worse and worse as the months go on, right? So it's like a trickle-down effect. But when we were talking about inflation and then they started talking about it because the government numbers could no longer hide it, they said, oh, it's going to be transitory. It's going to be transitory. And they went with that for, I don't know, two or three or four months. And then, and then they had to explain to us, well, transitory doesn't mean that it's going to come back down. Transitory only means that when it goes up, it's going to stay up there but level off, 
meaning that it's not going to continue to be six, nine percent inflation, but it's going to get to a certain point and level off. Right. And then after that, they were like, well, yeah, maybe we were wrong about inflation. And then after that, we were like, yeah, we were wrong about inflation and inflation is going to continue to go up. So, ladies and gentlemen, all these people do is lie to us. So why would you listen to them? Why anyone looks at the mainstream media? I don't know. Maybe for entertainment and maybe for to be able to do research and be able to warn people that, hey, what these people are telling you is not true. I mean, I would say that that's a good reason to watch mainstream media so that you can go out there and warn people, hey, what they're telling you is not true. They're telling you this and it's that instead. Right. Uh, ben Bernanke, before the 2008 meltdown that we had, he said, I think it was the day or two before he said something like, yeah, there's nothing to worry about. The housing market, there will never be a housing market crash. And then how many millions of Americans lost their houses? How many millions of Americans lost their jobs, lost their life savings? And now we have this guy here, Jerome Powell, telling us, yeah, we're going to be all right. We're going to have a little bit of hot inflation for a while, but it's going to be all right. Ladies and gentlemen, there are some people that are going to lose everything, everything. And then what happened in Japan is going to start happening here also. Why? Because when people have nothing left to lose, like one of my heroes, uh, Mr. Salente, they lose it. All right. If you, if you don't know who Gerald Salente is, love that guy. He's from Kingston, New York. And my, uh, my football team used to play their football team every year. And the year that I was in the football team, we, we played them for the state championship. And, yes, we won. But, anyways, I love that guy, Gerald Salente. Go check him out. Look, at his, look up his YouTube channel. It's called Gerald Salente. Great guy. Really good guy. But he, one of his uh, trademark phrases is when people have nothing to lose, they lose it. And that's what's going to happen here as well. So protect yourselves by getting prepared now.